Okay, we've reached the ever popular council initiated discussion phase. This is, um, I guess, uh, Terry's coined a new phrase, back to you portion of the council meeting, where we turn over the uh, agenda to the council members and um, we ask you to uh, bring issues to our attention. This is a good opportunity if you want to hear in, in a future meeting a report on a certain topic or, or want to engage us in a conversation and give us a chance to collect some information. Um, so the, the floor is yours. Any topics you want to hear? We, we try to anticipate in thinking about speakers and thinking about things to cover, looking ahead to February. Anything brewing? <laughs> yes, we're still, we're still in the PG rated part of the program, so we're, we're not quite at the R, so just hold on to some of your thoughts, but yes. Well, something in the, at some point, we probably ought to hear something in the personalized medicine initiative space. You mean precision medicine? Yeah, precision that medicine. too. I, you know, I, yeah, I'm I sorry, I, I, I used the wrong term, but I still yeah, think, yeah. I still think mine is right, but. We will, we will, yeah, I think that'll naturally happen as soon as we see, as it develops, what we can say, and, but absolutely, I think that'll be a regular update. I was going to make the same point, but I think, and maybe this is what you mean, is, but moving beyond the obvious and the cliche, is, is you know, what, what can NHGRI be doing? What should the genomics community be doing to either promote precision medicine or to be more fully engaged in this precision medicine initiative? I mean, you know, I, I, I sort of waffle back and forth. You know, someday, you know, this is what we do in terms of genomics and medicine. So it's not exactly new. Um, but on the other hand, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity uh, for us to move it forward. And so whenever it comes up, it just seems like we should focus more on the role of NHGRI and the role of genomics in general in precision medicine. Because my guess going forward, we're going to hear a lot. There's more to precision medicine than genomics, or I hope there is. Absolutely, a lot more. Um, but on the other hand, we have a, a responsibility around this table to this institute and see what we can do to um, help promote this initiative. Amy? Um, have, I guess we haven't heard from the um, large scale genome sequencing centers since they've kind of been retooled, have we? Well, they're about the largest centers mm -hmm. are going to be a topic of or discussion at the closed session of this meeting. Okay. So. But they, I mean, but I mean, beyond, down the road. Down the road. And probably, probably February might be too soon, but okay. yeah, we'll obviously want to keep updates about them. Yep. Val? Yep. Let me just, but Amy, are you thinking more about, like, uh, for us to bring you an annual report from the Common Disease Center? Would there be value in doing that? No, but maybe. Hi. Well, I mean, we can hold this till after the closed session, maybe, but I was thinking more just um, future directions, a one-time thing of how they fit in future directions. Yeah, I know we, we had this, uh, we got some report on this uh, a few sessions ago, but I think we need to maintain close contact with the FDA, particularly in the sense of uh, the precision medicine thing. One of the big obstacles is is actually uh, uh, <clears throat> at our institution is, is getting approval of things which I think should be easily approved uh, because you know uh, uh, gene directed therapy and such using vectors that are already being utilized and and if you're just using a different gene but the same uh, you know, viral vectors and certain things, uh, I think the process still needs to be worked on to be much streamlined. 
So I, I forgot which council meeting we had the FDA. I'm looking back. Last February. So we had last February. So it has about a year. That's okay. Wow, that was long. Um, meanwhile, I would say we we have ongoing interaction with them better than ever, um, and we could report on that almost any time. And then meanwhile, with wow, maybe we should just go for the top. We could try to get Rob here. We could use our Duke colleague to help persuade Rob to find time on his what will be an incredibly busy schedule. Maybe we could even get. So Artie can put in a plug. Maybe we could get Rob Caleb to come, and, but he would probably, I'm sure, bring his staff that are working on the in the genomics area, that staff we have relationship with. So again, I think that's a great suggestion to shoot for, maybe for February. There's always stuff. I mean, there's a lot. Of, again, we know because we're interacting with them frequently now. <laughs> so that must that's a political question. <laughs> um, wow. Good. Could be. Yeah. It, well, yeah. Their CTO is also awesome, or CIO, Taha. The, the FDA? Yeah. Yeah, okay. he's been working on their open FDA project and um, all the data that they're releasing. It's actually a, an incredible model for how this should all be happening. What data are they releasing? All right, is that better? So they're trying to release as much information as they can that isn't, you know, privileged information from the um, from the filings. But they've got, you know, a ton of drug, uh, adverse drug reaction responses that they're releasing. It's it's a, it's a pretty interesting data set. Open FDA. Yeah, there was an article coming up describing the whole process of PDL this month. I, I don't know. I don't seem to remember maybe February we talked about the SEER RFA, and I would like to hear an update about the status and the outcome of the review. So that will be reviewed in the fall, and it will be coming to uh, February. So it won't probably be for next council meeting, but you know, once we have a new director for NLM, it would be great if we could get them to come to council to give their vision? Right. So certainly, I completely agree with you. Um, I, I think unlikely May, I, uh, it's hard to say. May would be unlikely, maybe possible, certainly not February. Um, I, I would say the same thing about the directorship of the Precision Medicine National Cohort Programs. It's acting director now, but I mean, that search is going to start at very, I'm sure it'll be also placed in a very fast timeline. But both of those would be extremely appropriate. Are there any other, I mean, thinking about it, are there any other institute, uh, institute directors? Are there any other leadership positions at NIH? I'm just, just trying to think out loud. I mean, we can, we can be monitoring for this as well, but if people you want to hear from that we could be inviting, those are easy, the locals, yeah. I, I would actually like to hear from the um, director of NIMHD. That's a great suggestion, brand new. Just, I've only been across the room from, I actually haven't even met yet, but he's coming to see me. I think uh, we're going to arrange meetings. He's going to come around, um, but he's only been on the job, I think, Two weeks, three weeks. That's a, that's a great suggestion. I, yeah, yeah. Bob, I was going to suggest we hear the director of NIM MHD. That's exactly what I was just oh, about okay. to suggest. <laughs> great minds think alike. And, and, and I know I, I know Alicio uh, Press established was pretty well. I bet ECSF. And it actually leads to something else, which is this is not very well formed in my mind. I'm not sure how one would go about this. But thinking about precision medicine and the genomic medicine work group. Um, there is a certain amount of pushback against genomic medicine and precision medicine out in, out in the academic community from people who are really, really focused on the social and behavioral determinants of health and also people that are really public health focused. And I really think that a, um, some sort of a meeting of the mind between precision medicine, genomics, and social behavioral health and public health people, because I actually don't think they're antithetical at all, but it's being posed as being possibly uh, I'm interested in hearing you more say more about that. I mean, I, I'm curious how that, how that view comes in, how you have that view. How I have the view what? That there's a disconnect or a 
um, tension between public health researchers and precision medicine. I, I guess I wouldn't see it that way at all. Yeah, I guess I get the view, f particularly from public health researchers and social behavioral determinant researchers at UCSF, who say, who said to me things like, um, you know, this is this is really a lot of resources being spent on stuff that affects a very small number of people, and yet we could use these resources much more effectively if we studied things that involve many more people at the same time, uh, and also um, that. Um, it's an overemphasis on genetics and genomics as a determinant of health, and that there are many other factors that are as or more important that we're not spending money on, so that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I, I could, I could, you're right, and it's not from everybody, it's just there are some, but I, uh, I've given many talks on uh, Precision Medicine Initiative over the last, you know, 10 months or something like that, nine months in particular, and I remember right, one of them I gave was at a public health meeting. Um, and they were very unhappy that it was being called precision medicine as opposed to precision health, um, as an example. So, you know, again, these are just, I, I, people are going to disagree over many aspects of this, including cosmetic aspects like the name. But, yeah, Gail? Yeah, and I, I agree that, I, I've, that, that there's a lot of tension. And I think one of the other things that people, that cri people who critique this um, argue a lot is that it will exacerbate health disparities it will reify categories of race that are mainly social in, in origin anyway, et cetera. So, I, and I know there was a call for proposals, and what was the institute? Might have been the one with the new director, that, what, but U54 proposals about, that, that were looking at precision medicine and, and, and disparities. Hmm? Yes? Uh, so, and, and it, it, Yeah, that, that, and... Oh, sorry. But I just wanted to say that I, I imagine that those, that, the, that those will be reviewed and maybe even some awards made before the next meeting, but maybe not. But I guess it, there, there's, there's a lot of energy in the community about sort of addressing this in a really thoughtful way, addressing the ethics of it, addressing some of the, some of the critiques. And it would be nice to hear about genomics and health disparities in the context of precision medicine. And go ahead. You, you had a response. Thank you very much. Um, I would just echo that I think it's really important to have people who have diverse views about it. I don't, I think, um, just as there are people who might criticize it and be critical of the focus on genomics and sort of the way in which it might be um, conceptualized and operationalized at different institutes. I think the U54 in particular really encouraged um, a wide range of disciplines to be engaged in the precision medicine effort. So I think it'd be really timely to have that director and someone who works, um, you know, in the space of genomics and health disparities come and present. So one suggestion along those lines, and I, I, for one, am you know love precision medicine. What I'm very interested in, also very concerned that precision medicine could widen health disparities. Right, like all kinds of technologies can. And so I think it's a, a really important problem, and it's one of the things that we spent a lot of time at uh, the meeting that that Vince uh, uh, organized last week. Um, you know, so one potential strategy is to kind of understand where our colleagues in population health are coming from. Right, they're getting attacked in lots of different directions in terms of their funding. The National Science Foundation, those that receive funding from National Science Foundation, you know, is constantly under attack for behavioral research. And so they look at uh, those of us who do genetics and precision medicine and say, how come those guys are getting, uh, you know, all the resources? And so maybe one model could be the NHGRI model of having a set aside for um, for LC research and those aspects, and I think you know that should be a, a big component of precision medicine, and to, to also broaden the definition as my understanding is that it includes those behavioral determinants, and so in fact it should be seen as a rising tide lifts all boats, and that this is going to be broad and inclusive both in terms of research and population. But you know maybe Eric, you as someone who's been on the throttle of the PMI, can speak more to that. I, I, it is absolutely intended to include that. Jay, do you want to make a comment as a member of the working group? I mean, I, I, there was plenty of discussion about the of, of social determinants 
um, also being factored in to the precision medicine initiative in addition to genomic data of various other. So being socioeconomic kind of? Yeah. So I think there was, it, throughout the entire process, there was, um, uh, I, I think, a constant sort of awareness of, of the, the possibilities of this increasing disparities and issues like that and the notion that that it was something that we not only had to be cognizant of it, but also built in, build in kind of a response in the way this was structured. Um, you know, how that comes to be executed, I think, remains to be seen. But Maybe the Pony Express hasn't brought it out to the West Coast, but, you know, on our side, I, I definitely have gotten a lot of concerns from colleagues also at Stanford on the population health side about, you know, how could this, you know, could, could this precision medicine initiative end up, um, you know, sidelining a lot of the things that they think is important. And I think it's a mistake. I think they're, they're intimately aligned, right? Yeah, I mean, I think basically to, to make it as, uh, as uh, oversimplified as possible, to talk about N of one studies to a population health researcher and they look at you like you're a lunatic. I mean, how can you do an N of one study on anything? Okay, great suggestions. Other suggestions? Topics for future presentations? I'll just, I'll just add just as a further response to that. You know, I think, I, I think the way people think about precision medicine is, you know, everyone's got kind of a different conception of it in their head. But the way this might actually come to pass, I think it could end up broadly enabling exactly those same folks that you're, you're, you're talking about, um, right, if it, if it all works. I'll just add one more comment about a possible, like, I would, just thinking b backwards and also forwards, I would love to see some more basic science in kind of some of the presentations in the future. So I don't know if that would be in code or GGR or something like that. And, but. And, and so give us a little more detail what you're looking at. Are you, are you interested in program highlights? Are you interested in, from, from program staff, are you interested in um, members of the community who are our grantees who could describe their work? Or yeah, I would, I would be more interested in members of the community, but that's okay. okay. Okay, we just need to get you started and then it's hard to stop you. So thank you very much.